want to pour a slab that can handle anything, you can't just pour it and pray. It's guaranteed to crack and separate from old concrete. To build an industrial rated slab that lasts, you need a complete system, the right depth, a key way to lock it in, and the right rebar. I'm going to show you the full pro level setup in this video. Hi, David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. This is another phase at the metal shop. We've done a lot of work here so far, and this is an addition to the concrete I've already done around here. And it's just going to join the buildings to this area where the metal is stored so that they can drive the forklift across on either end. I have Doug here. He's running the backhoe. Not my brother Doug, but a different Doug. He's actually on that equipment. And the main reason he came over is because at the same time he dug a big pit in the back of this building, which will be for sandblasting. We're going to show that build too. So while he was here, I had him move a little bit of the gravel and it happened really quick with that, with that backhoe. Now I'm just doing a little fine tuning on the grade. Had about three yards of dirt came out of here and the gravel just got moved on top of the other gravel. We're doing six inches deep pouring right on the um, native ground that's here. It's good ground. It's just some sand and rock. Compacts really well. And we're doing rebar, two foot centers, three eighths bars. It's gonna be really solid. You can drive anything over this with this design. We're using big rock, one inch minus aggregate, 3000 PSI. Got the little Milwaukee cordless nine inch cutoff saw, cutting through the bars really quick. Last minute change, see those two uh, three quarter inch PVCs? Those were last minute, so we dropped them in the morning of the pour. The main thing when you're putting them above grade like that, instead of buried, is that you want them underneath the rebar, not on top of the rebar. That's that's the important thing. So right here, we're just kind of getting a wet screed. You notice the truck, it just crushed that cone right into the form and then knocked the form in. So we had to do a little adjustment there. This is a nice mix. Nice consistency, it's about a five inch slump. It would have been nice to rod this off the lengthwise, but since the truck could only come in from this direction, we had to put the weddies down and rod it the other direction. Four foot wide magnesium pole float with a rocker arm. Here's another wet screed going down. Oh, good news. I don't know if you remember Jade, and she got scared off after that wrestling match. She ended up coming back. She's here running some uh, camera work on this one. Also, I wanted to mention on January 20th through the 22nd, we're gonna be doing a live video from the world of concrete, walking around to vendors, also, you can jump in on the comment section and ask us where where you want to go or what tool, specific tool you want to see. And we're going to put a map up eventually that you can see every booth number and where it's at. We're going to do a haul, one haul a day. So whatever haul we're on that day is the haul and the booth numbers that you can specify. And then we'll go over there, check it out, and ask the questions that you want to and anything you want to say to the vendor or whatever tool they have, we're going to relate that to the vendor and then you're going to have the answers. We have Joe here. He's our concrete finisher. He came out just to help us out a little bit on this one. I did get a roller tamp, by the way. 
Got it at Decorative Concrete in Las Vegas. Great deal too, by the way. Didn't use the roller temp on this because I hadn't got it quite yet, but after pouring this, it was time to pull the trigger on buying one of those. I think it's gonna make it a lot easier laying these down. A lot less bull floating, and I think the rocks are gonna get down a little bit, bring up a little bit more cream easier all the way around. So here's Joe going the other direction on the bowl float. It's always good to bowl float in both directions if you have the space. A job like this, they're easy to pour. You got so much space, it's all pull tools. This versus, you know, two yards in an enclosed space is about equal as far as uh, work goes. Here's some nice drone footage. We will be cutting some joints in here on the short direction. And then I'm going to come back and then saw cut with an early entry saw lengthwise. I would have just jointed it, but everything I've done around all of this is uh, got combo joints and saw cut. So I wanted to be stay consistent with the look. Now this tool right here, three foot long, two and a half inches deep. And because it's three feet long, it it tracks really straight once you get it started. Also what it does, it breaks the aggregate down deep. So it guarantees you a crack in that location. Now here's your final joiner going over it. And this gets your nice clean radiuses. This one goes one inch deep with a three quarter inch radius both sides. On this same concrete truck, there was enough concrete in it for the back of this building. A pretty ingenious idea I came up with. Rather than pumping, I ended up building a big ramp and ramped the concrete down seven foot hole and used um, my tractor to move the concrete back there and slide it down the ramp. Worked out really nice, better than I expected. We're gonna be showing that one next. And Joe's got some weights on those Fresnos really laying it down flat and quick. One important thing about these jobs, you know, you can do a beautiful finish in the middle on what you're finishing, but if you have a mess around it, then the whole job looks bad. So there's a lot more to it than just the concrete itself. It's about where you uh, meet other concrete. If you have any spillage on it, make sure you get it cleaned up, keep clean edges and your surrounding area on a daily basis should be kept clean. Here's the funny trial going on for the final touch. And then we're just gonna broom right over that. Now we're giving it a non-slip finish. That way, if you're out there and it's raining or snowing, you know, you're going to have a little traction on there. Although it doesn't snow here ever. Here's Joey. So we have Joe and we have Joey. He's spraying the curing compound on here. There's your final look before I come back on the next day and saw cut it, which we're gonna show here shortly. Here's some of the other concrete work we've done. 
Okay, so far we got the blue chalk line right down the middle and it matches up with the other sock cut on the other side. We're using the cordless Milwaukee early entry saw, MX fuel battery. I set the depth before I even start cutting. In this case, I set it at one inch. Now I'm just touching up the edges with the cordless Milwaukee 9 inch, bringing it through and dropping it deep. I like to drop all the edges down a little bit to ensure the cracks stay in that groove. Also, it works great for water drainage. All right, that about wraps it up. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button. That way you'll be notified on our next upload. The next video is gonna be unique because it's, it's an in-ground poured and formed in place walls. Thanks for watching, have a good one.